Hi, this is the Fiery Joker. Remember when I promised back in my Canterlot wedding review way back in the day that I would review all of the MLP episodes? And I am going to be reviewing every single episode of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. Well, guess what? I'm following up on that promise. Sorta. Reviews of my normal style take a long time to write, produce, and edit, so I would never have the time to do all of them. I usually only do the controversial episodes or season premieres or finales because they always have something worth talking about. But I still want to follow through with my promise, so I do. Well, because I don't have an original idea in my head, I decided to use Jell Apocalypse's format for reviewing all of them. I will go through each season, starting with season 1, and review all episodes on a scale of 1 to 10. All scores are whole numbers, and sometimes there will be negative scores to indicate ironic enjoyment, because sometimes bad is better than boring. Also, keep in mind that the scores here might be different than the scores I previously awarded in my normal reviews, because like all things, opinions change and evolve over time. Let's get started. Awkward antisocial nerd saves the world? That's why bronies exist. The sixth element is heart. You can't unsee it now. Safe, but understandably safe. This episode should have aired way later. Lame. Apparently, showing off is only okay when Rainbow does it. An adventure plot outside a season premiere or finale? Sweet. Making a slumber party plot interesting? Uh, at least you tried. Episode not racist, I think, but annoying is Pony Pink. Fluttershy wrecks entire town with zero consequences. Fanboy silent. Using magic for the nest doesn't count. Diagnosis? Puberty. Will you two just kiss already? Great character episode for Rarity with a catchy song. Million ways to phrase the message and you picked that. Iconic episode for very good reasons. Sweetie's gospel number distracts from Twilight almost dying. The first in a long line of bad cringe comedy. Listen to the winding scene without visuals. You're welcome. Yeah, Fluttershy does look good in green. The fact that this wasn't awful is an amazing achievement. <laughs> Phoenix is a d A great lore dump with a clever framing device. Twilight, never have children. This is a kid's show, right? Where is Luna? And that's it for season one. Tell me in the comments if you want to see this for season two. I'll create a spreadsheet of my tastes because, again, I'm unoriginal. Also, here's the part of the video where I tell you my top and bottom five. I'll be alternating between them. Five best, five worst, four best, four worst, do you get the idea? Number five best, Dragon Shy. Dragon Shy is the first in a long line of episodes to try and make Fluttershy develop beyond the Shy Moe character. And for being the first one, it's surprisingly really good. Well, the best one goes to Hurricane Fluttershy, but this is great too. There's an actual adventure. Each of the characters gets something cool to do and everyone gets a few good jokes. If you ever want to get a person to watch the show, probably show them this one. Number five worst, feeling pinky keen. Okay, I know what this episode was trying to do. It was trying to teach that it's okay to not know or to not fully understand something. By all means, try to understand, try to learn, but if you don't, you gotta learn to be okay with that. When I first saw the episode, that's what I got from it, and it wasn't until I saw other people's reactions that I realized just how poorly worded everything was. Good ideas, just sloppy execution. Number four best, suited for success. All right, it's no secret that Rarity is my favorite of the main six, and this episode is a great catalyst as to why. After quite a few scenes of Rarity acting greedy in other episodes, we are once again reminded why she's the element of generosity, doing favors and trying to please everyone. Pretty much any artist can relate to her struggle of designing what you think is good versus what people want to see. Also, Tabitha does an amazing job voice acting here. I wish I had half the talent she did. Number four worst, Griffin the Brush Off. Again, another good message that's badly executed. I mean, if you want children to watch out against making friends who might be a bad influence or participates in bad behaviors, try to make them a little more realistic so the kids can see the good warning sides. Gilda just comes off as a tough girl stereotype. How's a kid supposed to connect her behaviors to actual people? Number three best, Sonic Rainboom. I think when Bronies were first starting out, we were all struggling to figure out which character was our favorite because you had episodes where each of them would do something awesome that would make them your number one. Stairmaster made you love Fluttershy, Party of One made you love Pinky, and Sonic Rainboom made you love Rainbow Dash. We gotta see Rainbow's confident persona shatter, we gotta see a little bit of what made her who she is, and of course, we got to see the Sonic Rainboom. How does something like that manage to sound so silly, yet so awesome? Number three worst, Boastbusters. The characters here showcased alarming hypocrisy. Trixie's just a loudmouth, said Rainbow Dash. Snips and Snails are the first in a long line of bad slash pathetic male characters who aren't funny or endearing. And why is everyone heckling Trixie for showing off? It's like, have you been to any magic shows in your life? That's what they do. It's called presentation. Presentation! Number two best, Cutie Mark Chronicles. Basically, everyone's origin story, and it's great. The show definitely has an overarching theme of destiny, and this episode is a huge part of setting that up. Everyone's origin is interesting and or funny, and seeing them tied together seamlessly really sets the bar high for future episodes. I'm really surprised they managed to cram all that in there and not have it feel rushed. Like, 
other episodes. Just good job. Good job here. Number two worst, the showstoppers. Okay, how did a bridge Kirito say it? A never ending parade of failures and fuck ups? That's this episode. I know it's the first season, but the slapstick here really needs some work. And when you repeat blessed slapstick over and over, it gets annoying, like really annoying. There are some interesting bits, but any good it has is quickly swallowed up by that embarrassing show. It's like, I get it. I get why the concert is cringy. It seemed like they wanted to do a parody of these kinds of shows, but it just ended up being painful. Number one best, a dog and pony show. Okay, so in recent years, there's been a huge push for stronger female characters with mixed results. A lot of times they try way too hard to subvert old tropes that they feel less like characters and more like tools. Well, I'd like to point to this episode as a good example of this concept done correctly. Yes, Rarity does get kidnapped, but in the end, she saves herself. And her personality doesn't get changed for it. She stays completely in character for all of it. It's funny how you're never sure if she's acting or not until the end. People like to bill MOP as a show with a strong female cast and diverse personalities. And this is an episode that proves it. Number one worst, Owl's Well That Ends Well. Oh, what a steaming pile this is. The plot happening has to rely on Twilight's inability to properly care for Spike. That's bad. Spike's dialogue is annoyingly juvenile, especially as he constantly narrates his feelings to us. The only mildly funny thing was the owl saying who, but... You know, to this day, I don't think the staff know what to do with Owlicious. Like, I'm pretty sure plenty of Spike episodes could have been immensely better by using him as a foil. Just saying. God 